हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम डॉक्टर नरपमा त्रहनपति फ्रॉम इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ लिवर एंड बिलेरी साइंसेस टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द मॉड्यूल बायोथेरेपी व्हिच इज फ्रॉम द पेपर मॉलिक्यूलर थेरेप्यूटिक्स दिस मॉड्यूल इज डिजाइंड टू टीच स्टूडेंट दैट व्हाट इज बायोथेरेपी व्हिच थेरेपीज आर कंसीडर्ड एज बायोथेरेपीज हाउ दे आर manufactured and how it affects the body under this therapy it is important to stimulate and restore the ability of body's natural immune responses or to fight against infection and diseases biological therapies are also called as biotherapy or immunotherapy which is commonly used to treat different kinds of cancers as well as other conditions biological therapy is a form of treatment that uses portions of body's natural immune system to treat disease and also used to protect body from some of the side effects of certain cancer treatments or other aliens biological therapies are drugs that change the way the cells work and help the body to control the growth of primary liver cancer how does biological therapy works biological therapy often involve the use of substances which is called as biological response modifiers in short it is called as brms the body normally produces brms these substances however in very small amounts in response to infection or disease using these modern laboratory techniques scientists can produce brms in large amounts for use in the treatment of cancers rheumatoid arthritis or the crohn diseases these brms can be used for the inflammation and we can use the for this blocking the action of specific proteins which are in, involved for the inflammation biological therapy target the specific molecules on cancer cells and destroy the cancerous growth cells how you have the biological therapy you can have biological therapy as tablet as injectable we can inject into your blood stream as a drip or injection into your arm and under with the injection under your monoclonal antibodies as biological therapies monoclonal antibodies like interferon interleukin 2 and several type of clone stimulating factors like csf gm csf gcsf are forms of biological therapy for example interleukin 2 and interferon are two examples of brms being tested for the treatment of advanced malignant melanomas monoclonal antibodies are a common type of biological therapy for many different cancers and other conditions these are laboratory produced antibodies that are designed to attack specific proteins expressed by abnormal cells these are the kind of drugs like rituximab which is used to treat non hodgkin lymphoma elimitozumab to treat the chronic lymphocytic leukemia lipimumab for metastatic melanoma interferons like interleukin 2 for the advanced malignant melanomas and clone stimulating factors like csf GMCSF GSF for the sepsis to treat cancer cell growth many drugs like bevacizumab which targets the vascular endothelial growth factors VGF citimizumab and that to target the other melanoma cancer cells these can be used as the biological therapy other kinds of biological therapies to treat cancers which are also responsible to inhibit the unwanted cell growth these examples even include 
the epidermal growth factor receptors target the human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 these are her2 antibodies there are many side effects for biological therapies like chills fever muscle aches weakness there is loss of appetite nausea and many other problems for the considered as side effects for the biological therapies as i told you earlier there are the therapies biotherapies for the cancer and specifically for the liver cancer we have the many biotherapies which are used as the combination drugs or the alones these therapies are the sunitinib erotinib bevacizumab and the tefinostat most important drug is sorfenib for primary liver cancer researchers are looking at some biological therapies in trials for liver cancer all new treatments have to go through clinical trials process and this takes many years other biological therapy including the most important is the sorfenib sorfenib is a type of biological therapy which attacks the cancer growth and it block the tyrosine kinase inhibitor tyrosine kinase inhibitor is important for the cell proliferation and cancer growth sorfenib works in two ways it stops signals that tell cancer cells to grow and also cancer cells forming new blood vessels it stops the forming the new blood vessels in the cancer which they need to keep cell growing or the tumor growing now i need to tell you that how immune system is involved where we can use the biotherapy or we can harness harness this immune system to construct the biotherapy Butics. Immune pathogenesis has been identified for the wide spectrum of diseases, those in which specific immune components have a central role, lead themselves to targeted therapy. The aim of such treatment or biotherapy is to modify the disease course when applied early and limit the complication of these conventional treatments being used and provide options for treatment refractory diseases. Immune system is de designed to protect the host against infections like the innate immunity. This is not antigen specific and the response is same on repeated exposure to pathogens. However, the adoptive immunity in this, this is specific to the antigen recognition and it is required before activation, proliferation and differentiation into effector or the memory cells. So biotherapy is used to harness this innate and adoptive immune system of the patient or the host. Other uh, stuff of the antibiotic therapeutics are the antibody dependent cellular cytotoxicity which can be harnessed as a potent mechanism by which cellular targets are labeled with therapeutic monoclonal antibodies and then undergo the lysis of the cells or the destruction of the cells. Biological therapies both monoclonal antibodies or the fusion proteins which incorporate the specific recognition of the component and antibody function and these fusion proteins are made as the biotherapy. To have the biological therapy there should be the potential targets in the human system for the biotherapy. So the biotherapy can act as stimulant or can inhibit the those targets which are responsible for the pathogenesis or the disease. For example, T cells require antigen to taken up by antigen presenting cell 
processed and presented in the context of self major histocompatibility complex molecule now nile t cells also require a second co stimulatory signal for full activation it means t cells are important for the t cell activation and this can be the potential target for the biotherapy absence of any signal or the second signal or the first signal leads to the t cell energy a state of unresponsiveness now we need to use biotherapy to activate the t cells so we have to understand first t cell immunology and then use the biotherapy to increase the t cell potential another example lymphocytes express many many surface glycoproteins and those surface glycoproteins are used for the homing mechanism and they can be used with a certain adherent molecule directing specific lymphocyte to certain sites sites for danger sites for damage and sites for cancer like a4 beta 7 integrins are being used for the gut specific homing of lymphocytes there are many potential target for therapeutic manipulation of immune based diseases for example a specific cytokine which is used in the activation pathway co stimulation pathway or adherent molecule can be used as the biotherapy so potential targets for the biotherapy need to understand through the immune system and through host immunity as i told you in the previous slide t cell activation is must for the potential biotherapy target for the full activation t cells require interaction between the antigen specific t cell receptor and the antigenic peptide presented in the context of self mature histocompatibility complex by the antigen presenting cell a co stimulatory second signal is then required which is delivered by the interaction between cluster of differentiation cd28 on the t cell with cd80 86 on the antigen presenting cells later the t cell express CTLA-4, which is inhibitory molecule and which has higher affinity for CD80-86, and delivers a down-regulatory signal, thereby switching off the immune response. As CTLA-4 is an inhibitory molecule, it switch off the immune response when the pathogen is cleared. Now, fusion proteins can be made to activate the T cells. or to down regulate the ctla4 and have been developed for to block the co stimulatory pathway for use in many many diseases like autoimmunity or in the transplant rejection how the monoclonal antibodies or the fusion proteins are made in the 1917 kohler and milstein first developed the monoclonal antibody therapeutics they have used the conventional hybridomas for fusion of b cells from immunized mice with murine myeloma cell lines these are the hybridomas they have made it now development of human anti mouse antibodies was an important limiting factor for some of the early murine treatments in the biotherapeutics genetic manipulations are also being used which allows the combination of genes from different b lymphocyte sources and make the chimeric monoclonal antibodies chimeric monoclonal antibodies have the combination of murine variable region of genetic material with human constant region genes there are fully humanized antibodies which are the combination of murine cdr genetic material with the remainder of the antibody of human origin and finally 
fully human monoclonal antibodies derived only from human sources for example they are can be used in the fast display or in the transgenic mice also we can use the fully human monoclonal antibodies monoclonal antibodies in the fusion proteins they target as the biotherapy and which improve the interaction with the human fc receptors on effector cells they reduce the immunogenicity they prolong the therapeutic half life and reduce the adverse reactions they select the specific fc component to reduce target cell lysis versus inhibition of cell surface molecules monoclonal antibodies can be further modified for example as labeling of the tech toxins for use in cancer immunotherapy so fusion proteins or monoclonal antibodies are being made specifically to harness in the cancer or rheumatoid arthritis system in changing the fc region of human antibody molecule usually immunoglobulin g1 onto a specific molecule component generate a fusion protein we have understood that there is a clinical efficacy of ctla4 molecule as biotherapy how it is being used there is a generation of fusion protein construction of ctla4 fusion protein constructed by the combination of molecular component of interest with the constant fc region of antibody molecule usually immunoglobulin igg fc which imparts the fc function on the molecular component for therapeutic use ctla4 ig is or antibodies derivatives of which have shown clinical efficacy in the treatment of rheumatoid arthritis and transplant rejections here if i am showing you there is a molecular component of interest which belongs from ctla4 and there is igg fc region now ctla4 fusion protein acts to block co-stimulation signal 2 which is required for the full T cell activation and for the transplant rejections where the T cells are more proliferating and aggressive and activating these CTLA-4 biotherapy can be used to inhibit the T cell activation. Growth factors as biological therapy now i will talk about the few growth factors which can be used as biotherapy these are epidermal growth factor receptors these are called as egfr and commonly expressed by colorectal cancer cells now there is a antibody against this egfr which is a chimeric monoclonal antibody which specifically block egfr and used in colorectal malignancies. Another growth factor molecule is vascular endothelial growth factor, which is called as VEGF. VEGF stimulates the growth of endothelial cells central to angiogenesis in tumor growth. Now there is another monoclonal antibody molecule called as BVC Jumab which is directed against VEGF and which protects the metastatic colorectal cancer. Another molecule is human epidermal growth factor receptor 2 called as HER2. These are present in the 25 to 30 percent of patients with the breast cancer and over expressed in these patients in the malignant cells. However, women with the cancers which have the aggressive disease and significant shortened life pattern, there we have used the biological therapy which is called Tastujumab. This molecule is against the HER2 and increase the clinical benefit of first line 
hemotherapy in metastatic breast cancer. There are other receptor targets for approved biological therapies. Now I will talk about glycoprotein 2B and 3A alpha receptors. These receptors are present on platelets. And as you know, platelets have an important role in complications of coronary angiographies. In the coronary angiography, if the platelets have the more of the glycoprotein 2B3 alpha receptor, this can be, be dangerous to the patient and it increases the mortality rate. Now the other molecule, biotherapy, which is called at the HCG map, a chimeric monoclonal antibody with the FAB FAB fragment of antibody directed against platelet glycoprotein 2B3A receptor. This antibody reduced the 35% incidence of acute ischemia coronary angios. But drawback of this molecule is it increased the hemorrhage complications. Therefore, this inhibitor should be considered in the management of unstable angina only. However, more preclinical and the clinical trials should be needed in the vast majority of the patients. There are biological therapies for infectious diseases. Now I will talk about few of the infectious diseases which are prevalent in the neonatal or in infants like respiratory syncytial virus which is very dangerous and in present in infants at high risk. For prevention of this respiratory syncytial virus there is a pelvizumab molecule a humanized monoclonal antibody directed against the A epitope of the F protein of respiratory syncytial virus which prevents this infectious disease in infants. Another are the cytokines which target for the immune based therapies or the diseases. Cytokines earlier I also talked. Now the another cytokines like IL-12 interferon gamma and TNA alpha can be used for the Crohn disease and these and molecules can be used for the another diseases simultaneously like a humanized monoclonal antibody mepolizumab which is directed against IL-5. IL-5 this molecule to restrict the IL-5 this molecule can be used in the Crohn disease also. However, all these cytokine targets and biological molecules efficacy does that is very limited and in very small patients we need to increase the same. There are many other risks when we synthesize the antibody based biotherapeutics. Biotherapeutics as I told you earlier they are T cell dependent they can be the monocyte dependent and can modify or modulate the immune system by the T cell or by the monocyte or by the cytokine secretion or by the markers of activations like the CTLA4 or the inhibitors by the phagocytosis by antigen presenting cells and proliferation. Now when we generate the biotherapy for the particular disease there are the risk that when we are generating whether there is a variation in primary sequence of the molecule whether we have the host cell specific post translational modifications after introducing the these biotherapies there could be changes in formulations there could be changes in aggregation chemical modifications. So these all biotherapies can be tested in the cell lines before going to the clinical trials in the preclinical 
in vitro assays now i will talk about how we can go for the in vitro preclinical assays and modify these biotherapies therefore there is a assessment of biomolecule as biotherapy stage by stage like first we will synthesize the biotherapy in silico sequence and sequence of which attributes the based risk also we assess then in silico or in vitro pre clinical immunogenicity can be tested this is called as the pre clinical phase of the biotherapy it depends upon the then from pre clinical we can test it on the donors or the patients based on the hla typing similar hla typing in the phase 2 or the phase 3 studies we assess the immunogenicity then in the final stages which we take care of that the risk assessment immune characterization and then it can be launched after the phase 3 clinical trial studies in the market and it can be used for the manufacturing purposes through the industry now i will tell you how to check the immunogenicity of biotherapeutic assays in the pre clinical trials we can assess the biotherapy for the t cell proliferation by using these antibodies we can do the cd4 t cells proliferations how we will do it we will first characterize the donors from which we are taking the whole blood and those are actually matched then we will isolate the pbmcs from whole blood then we can assess the viability of pbmcs by the trypin blue method now we have to see the cd4 t cell responses for that you can deplete the cd8 t cells from the pbmcs and isolate only cd4 t cells now challenge these cd4 t cells with the monoclonal antibodies and see t cell proliferative responses on day 5 7 9 and few more days more we can also check the immunogenicity of target molecule by monocyte evaluation or the how we will do the monocyte evaluation we can culture those pbmcs overnight and then adherent cells we can take by removing the non adherent cells and stimulate those non adherent monocytes by the glycated monoclonal antibodies and evaluate the cytokines in the supernatant these are the immunogenicity assays however many pre clinical trials in the early drug development there is the in vitro analysis of monoclonal antibodies il2 or interferon gamma which are used as a pro and anti inflammatory cytokines can be checked by any sport multiple cytokine analysis can be done by the cba arrays to assess the that whether this molecule is fit for the pre clinical trials and the immunogenicity what is the efficacy and what is the safety of the this molecule can be assessed by the immunogenic reaction of this molecule to assess these by molecules we need to assess the sequence variants of these biomolecules during the early development of monoclonal antibodies you have to produce them different sequences and see that whether sequence variants are better for the t cell proliferations il2 secretions and proliferation plus the il2 secretion cells for example i will give you these three slides where the figures a b c it shows that there is a fusion protein molecule 
fusion protein one molecule have the mutant one mutant two mutant three it means it has the sequence variance in these mutant molecules of fp1 now these all molecules we have used one control which is the fp1 with the no fc branch now we can see that whether these mutants are used for the t cell proliferation il2 secreting cells and the proliferation plus il2 secreting cells if you can see the picture only the fp1 mutant 1 was the best fitted for the t cell proliferation and il2 secreting cells it means it is the main uh, sequence molecule of FP1 which can be used for the biotherapy candidate. There are potential immunological risks also after the sequence variance or the chemical modification. When we do the biotherapeutic molecule or in the early drug development, the glycation of molecule is important. Glycation of amino acid is a potential chemical modification that can occur during the manufacture of biotherapy or upon administration of patients and may pose an increased risk of immunogenicity. To evaluate the biotherapeutics, glycation by different types of sugar is important. Whether we have glycated low, medium, and high, this is also important to predict the clinical immunogenicity. Monoclonal antibodies treated by galactose or glucose or mannose on non-glycatic sugar, this is also important for the biotherapy generation. Now after glycating with the galactose, glycose, mannose, we can analyze this biotherapeutic molecule by mass spectrometry or by the again assay using the T cell proliferation or the monocyte adherent method to secrete the signature cytokines and we can now review that what cytokines these glycated biotherapeutic molecules are doing it. So student let us summarize what we have learned in this module, module. Biological therapies have been developed on the basis of greater understanding of immune system and disease pathogenesis. Benefits of biotherapies are they are attractive approaches, they target the specific molecule pathways and which influence the disease activity and pathogenicity. Their aim is to limit the side effects commonly associated with conventional immune modulation. However, drawbacks of biotherapies, they are potentially hazardous and costly. Hence, careful patient and disease selection is important criteria. The long-term safety of these molecules is a big issue with many of these agents is, are still unknown and ongoing monitoring is an important part of patient care. Many thanks.